I, I've been waiting for this Orlando team to start playing better. This is an Orlando team that last year had a, had a very good season, finished with 63 points, uh, just back of first place in the East. And they were mired in like the bottom 10 of the uh, Eastern Conference standings, uh, the bottom half of the standings, waiting for them to do something. And they finally did. They just made a couple changes to the lineup. And sometimes that's all it takes. Um, they have a, a fantastic uh, midfielder, number 10. They made him number uh, the number 10, Martin Ojeda. And uh, when you put a when you put a guy in the in the position he should be playing, uh, he, all of a sudden he starts to to open uh, open the field, uh, create chances for his players. And Orlando just went on a roll and started to win games. And now they're in a playoff spot. They're a buy on team, and they've been taking money over the last uh, three to four days when these lines came out. They were a little slow. Um, a lot of books putting these lines out, but they have been picking up money and. Uh, and now they get a Montreal team who had put together a nice little run of their own, and then they lose to Toronto at home at Saputo Stadium to close out, um, uh, not to close out the season, but to close out um, the, the MLS uh, before this tournament starts. And they're just not playing well as a team. This is one where you just take the hotter team. Uh, you're probably going to have to lay a goal unless you're perfectly fine with laying a minus 200 VIG. I'm not normally one who lays that amount of VIG on any team. Uh, you have to hit at a bigger rate. But uh, Orlando's definitely the play here. We're going to see some goals in this one. And there are some great options over at uh, places like DraftKings. If you click on the game and then you click on game parlays, you can minimize that uh, Orlando VIG from minus 200 by taking Orlando and over one and a half total goals scored. Uh, that's at about 150. You can go one step further, take Orlando uh, to win and over two and a half goals. This game line is currently at 3.25. They expect goals in this one. Uh, and you can get that for one minus 115. So that Orlando win in over two and a half. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's one of my client plays. So I'll, um, I'm backing that one up uh, with my clients tonight. Orlando to win in over, over two and a half goals. Combined goals scored. So 2-1 Orlando result gets us there. Uh, so uh, this is an annual tournament, right? And we've had two other feels like bigger international tournaments just finished. How many of these MLS teams are really going to put forth their best effort? Because the playoff races are right ahead of them when they come back. Is this a balls to the wall scenario yeah. or is this a, yeah, not so much scenario for the, uh, for the MLS teams? No, and that's uh, and that's an excellent question, uh, Teddy. Because you look at it, and uh, some of these um, some of these teams, not only from uh, Mexico, but from the MLS, had players leave to go play for uh, either South American teams in the Copa America, uh, or for obviously for Team US uh, for the Mexican national team, and then there's ones that uh, are from Europe that went to play in the Euros. So it left a lot of these MLS teams with watered down lineups because they continued to play throughout those two tournaments going on. And what happens is, and we saw it, I saw it last year, and I, I found some really great spots to make money and client uh, profit for clients in finding teams that are just going to look at this tournament and say, um, okay, we have two group stage games. Um, let's mail in the points and uh, and and take that uh, seven to ten or ten to fourteen days off um, and uh, practice rest the players and get them ready for the final nine games of the season. And those are normally teams that are either at the very top of the standings who uh, in the MLS, uh, the way the MLS works is that if you're, um, the championship game is never determined ahead of time where it's going to be played. It's going to be played at the team that has the most points. So you have a team like, uh, let's say, Inter Miami. They want to win the MLS Cup. Uh, they by doing that you need to win the, the sorry the supporters shield. So the games in the league are more important than winning this tournament. They've already won this tournament. And conversely, you look at the teams that are in seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, tenth spot. Uh, nine is the nine is the the playoff line where eighth and ninth place play a play-in game, much like the, the to to be the 16th seed in March Madness and face the number one team in the conference. So, and there's a bunch of teams within two or three points of that uh, of that line, that ninth playoff line. Um, uh, Austin FC was one team last year. They pretty much mailed it in. You could see it with their games. Uh, they didn't even use their starters in their first game. They lose, I think it was like three or four nil. So there's going to be teams. Uh, I go through 
uh, team reports. I go through um, the, the news conference from from the managers of these teams to see how focused they really are on wanting to even play this tournament. It is a tournament where they don't make a lot of money from it. But they do make a lot of money if they make the MLS playoffs and can, uh, and can extend that um, a, um, a little longer with a, a run to the quarterfinals and semifinals. That's where the money is for these teams and not this tournament. So, yes, there's going to be some teams that are, Teddy, are going to mail it in after uh, after this, uh, the hard, long summer that it's been in international football.